Welcome to this product video. Today we're going to look at creating a simple point-to-point -point wireless link using two Cambium Networks Force 180 radios. So the first thing you're going to have to do is come over to your network connections and change your IP address settings on your Ethernet port. So I'm going to change this to 192.168.0.10 or you can use any address in this range as the, the radios are configured on this range out of the box. So after you've done that, you need to come over to your web browser and browse to 192.168.0.2. This is the default IP address of the Force 180 as it is shipped from the factory. So now we need to log in. The default credentials are admin for the username and admin for the password. When you log in, you're first greeted with the home page. In order to configure this radio, we're going to come over to the configuration tab. This is going to be a master radio of the link. So we're going to first change the radio mode to be access point. We're going to set the driver mode to be TDD, which is time division duplex. At the moment, this radio is configured to be a generic Etsy region. We can apply a country code later on. And we're using a range unit of miles. So what we're going to need to do is set up a SSID. So I'm just going to call it Force 180 TTP. I'm going to change my maximum registrations to one, as this is going to be a point-to-point -point link, and the max range to be one mile, as it's quite a short point-to-point -point link. In terms of frequency, you've got two options. We can use either automatic channel selection, which will pick three frequencies upon boot of the radio. Um, it will do a scan of the environment and pick the three least congested channels. Or you can select three manual frequencies, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to use a 40 megahertz channel to get the most throughput. And I'm going to select three frequency carriers, which we have to do in order to satisfy the DFS requirement which means we have to change frequency if a radar strike is seen. So there we go, I've got three frequencies set up, 5500, 5550 and 5690. We're gonna come over to power control. I'm gonna set the output power down to minus 15 dBm as I'm configuring this on a bench. Um, when deploying in the field, this is typically typically be a bit higher. Um, you want to be a little bit careful with this because transfer power being too high, it can cause the radio to have a false radar detection and you'll be skipping frequencies. And that can get quite annoying. So we're going to come down to subscriber module target receive level. This is good to set at next 60 dBm. It's uh, what I deem to be optimal for these sort of links. We've got scheduler, so we can fix the downlink uplink ratio, 75, 25, 50, 50, 30, 70, or flexible. I'm gonna set this as flexible as the amount of data I'm putting over this, uh, it, it doesn't need a fixed uh, uplink downlink ratio for that. Frame size is five milliseconds and traffic rate, management traffic rate will be MTS1. So the next thing to do is come over to system. You can give your device a name. So I'm gonna give it Force 180 AP. This is where you can change your web access to HTTPS and uh, enable or disable SSH and Telnet. You can set an uh, NTP server, which I'm gonna do now. 192.168.0.254, which is my router. And you can set Latin long, various syslog servers, SNMP, um, CM Maestro remote management, which uh, enables these radios to be managed by the cloud. Uh, these aren't gonna be managed by a cloud platform, so I'm gonna leave that blank. And then at the bottom, you've got four levels of um, account access to these radios, admin, home, installer, and a read only, which you can modify the password for all of them. Next tab I'm gonna come over to is network. And I'm gonna set an IP address of 192.168.0.1. Set my gateway to be 
my router, which is 192.168.0.214. And I'll set that as my DNS server as well. I'm not doing any VLANs, so I don't need to enable management VLAN. I'm going to come over here and enable Ethernet and wireless management access, which means I can access the management um, GUI of this radio when I'm connected directly to a subscriber module. And the final tab is the security tab. We're going to set up a basic WPA key. I'm just going to call it demo 180 link. I'm going to copy that and I'll put it in a notepad so that we can put it into the subscriber later on. So now you should be good to go ahead and save your config. Um, it'll ask you to confirm your CN Maestro onboarding function. We're not using it, so we'll just hit OK. It will then say, do you want to save the changes? After the reboot, the IP address will be changed to 192.168.0.1. Going to hit OK on that. And then the device will apply the changes and you'll be prompted to reboot the radio by clicking the reboot device button, which will helpfully turn orange. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. As you can see, the uh, radio is now rebooted. We're on 192.168.0.1. And you can go ahead and log back in. When you log in, you've got the home screen again, and it will give you an indication of what the device is doing. So at the moment, we're doing a channel availability check on the primary frequency for the DFS. So we have to wait one minute before we can transmit. That's doing that now. So while that's scanning the frequencies and doing the DFS channel check, I'm going to go and connect up to the subscriber module and we can get that configured. So I've just plugged into my subscriber module, and this again is Brand new, out of the box, defaulted, and it's on 192.168.0.2. Again, the credentials are admin and admin, and we log in. You come to the home screen, and you can see we're in subscriber module mode, which is default out of the box, and we're going to get this configured now. So we go to configuration, radio, and we'll leave it on subscriber module mode. We're going to get the country code from the master AP end, and the, the, we're going to use TDD, time division duplex, driver modes, and range unit miles. We're going to come down to the scanning list for the frequencies. I'm going to disable 20 megahertz, and we're going to leave on 40, as that's what I've got configured on the master. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the frequencies to scan, as if I need to change frequency on the master radio, it will not impact the subscriber module, so I won't need to come in here and pick another frequency on this end, as it will be scanning all of them by default anyway. I'm going to scroll down to power control. As you can see, we've got this set on auto. It's going to receive a, a beacon from the AP with a, that desired AP receive level of minus 60, and the subscribe module will dial back its power to meet that as accordingly. So now we're going to come over to system. I'm going to name this radio force 180 SM for subscribe module. Web access, SSH access, etc. Same as the other radio. I'm going to set my NTP server up again. 192.168.0.254. And then I'm going to come over to the network tab. I'll put this on a static address. I'll put my gateway and my DNS server addresses in. We're not doing any VLAN, so we're going to leave that. We're not doing any packet limits or multicasting, so we're going to leave that as well. And then we're going to come to the security tab. On wireless security, I'm going to disable radius because we're not using it. I'll leave WPA2 enabled, and then I will type in the pass key, which we configured on the master. There we go. And I will hit save. 
this is now a private config and you will have to reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So that radio is now rebooted. We'll log back in. And we can see the uptime is now 54, 55 seconds. Um, we don't have a link achieved yet, so we've got wireless status down, link quality and capacity at 0%. And you can see the DFS status is doing the channel availability check, meaning it's doing the minute scan to see if there's any radar on the, the uh, selected operating frequency. So once that's done that, we'll come back and we'll have a look at the monitor and wireless tab to see when we've fully registered with the master 8B. And just like that, you can see the link is now up. The registration state is successful. We're operating on 5,500 megahertz at a 40 megahertz channel bandwidth. We've got our received signal strength indicator of minus 76 dBm. That's just because they're on the bench. An SNR of 20 dB. And the link is meeting the registration criteria. And there's a bid up for 43 seconds. So to verify this, we can now go over to the tools tab and we can perform a wireless link test. I'm gonna go with a medium packet size of 800 bytes for a duration of 10 seconds to give sort of a generic packet size. If I hit start test, this will now do a link over 10 seconds and it will give us a, a figure of the downlink and the uplink. So downlink we've got 51.29 megabits and uplink we've got 40.8 megabits. All looks pretty good. So we can come back to the home tab and verify the link is up. It's in service monitoring on the DFS status. We've got a link quality of 100% and a link capacity of 80% and the wireless status most importantly is up. So that's been that product video for today guys. Um, if you liked it, let me know. And I hope to see you again soon.